Last week, I released a course on Udemy called Copilot Studio AI Master or whatever. I put the course complete title here. Uh, the course was about how to make chatbots using the Copilot Studio. And inside that, I have a lecture about using the adaptive cards to present information. Considering that course was a beginner level course, I decided to stay away from complexities of adaptive card and the way that we need to dig into the JSON code and things like that. But here it's YouTube, I'm free. So now I can freely talk about how to ask question using an adaptive card inside Copilot Studio. Stay with me, this is gonna be fun. Let's start by defining an adaptive card. Adaptive card is simply a form, something like this, that the chat user can get inside it and fill and submit it. But it's a little bit special because it can pop up right inside your chatbot. Plus, you design it in pure JSON, which may sound a little bit weird, but don't worry about it. We will get over it. You can host it in many platform. The host decides about the final look. So what you design something like this, when it comes to Copilot, it may look one way when you host exactly the same thing in Teams, it looks slightly different. So you cannot really nitpick on this corner should be red, this color should be this and that. No, 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 no. You just define the outlines in JSON and the host decides how it's gonna display it. But you can use regular expressions to validate the user input. With all things in mind, let's do it. Inside Copilot Studio, I just create a new Copilot. I just give it a name, question with adaptive card. I just accept everything and I click create. Our copilot is created. Let's start by going into topics and I want to create a new topic from blank and I want to give it a name as adaptive card question demo. I just take a copy of it and I use exactly the same thing at my trigger phrase, paste plus and we are good. So if the user at the moment types in something that contains this, we're gonna see that. We don't care about providing the proper trigger phrases as long as I have one thing that I can fire this topic, I am good. So I just save it. And if you want to make it a little bit better, you can simply go to every refresh to speed up the process. I go to the topics, system, and this is coming from conversation start. So. For this one, I can click this one and I add a quick reply so I don't need to type it in every time. So I just say send a message and this is my text. Save. This one has nothing to do with the adaptive card so far, but because I'm going through multiple testings in this demo, it's going to make the life a whole lot easier. So this time if I refresh it, apart from showing the original message, it gives me the option for a quick response so I can click on this and it fires my topic. I go to the topics again and I go back to my adaptive card question demo. Here, I want to ask a few questions. So the first thing that I want to do is ask a question with adaptive card. Keep that in mind. Instead of just asking a simple question, I want to put something like this in front of the user to complete and click submit. I have the adaptive card. Let's design that. I close this one because I need this space. And as you can see, adaptive card at the moment doesn't show anything. So let's click on this. And all you see is this weird JSON with absolutely nothing as designer. It just has a schema, but there is a little bit of promising thing here that says open adaptive card designer. Adaptive card designer is somewhere completely out of your copilot because this is a general designer. This is designed to create adaptive cards for multiple environments one of them being Copilot. So when you are inside this guy, it's just a simple designer, it's general purpose, and you can target your environment. So if I click on this dropdown, you will see I can build something for, for example, Outlook for Microsoft Teams or whatever. At the moment, I don't care about any one of them. My focus is on bot framework chatbot. But before doing anything, you know what, there is a sample thingy. Let's start by creating a new one. Because we are pros, we don't care about any one of these 
sample things. Just take a look at them and see what is possible to do. But who cares about the rest? I want to click it, create from blank. Although I haven't done anything, it starts complaining right in the beginning. It says there is a warning. The selected target version is 1.6, which is this one is greater than the version supported by bot framework web chat 1.3. Basically, it means that if the target version that you are using in your designer is higher than 1.3, which is at the moment at 1.6, it's not going to be compliant with your, with your host. So that's fine. I'm happy with 1.3. And as soon as you do that, the warning will go away. At the moment, I have an adoptive card. It is blank, so if I click on the preview, you will see there is nothing. Let me turn off the preview so I can add elements to it. The card that I have in mind starts with a title on the top. So I can go here and I can say, add a text block. And this text block has multiple properties. It's not very intuitive the way that you see here, but the first thing that you need to do, provide an ID for every element that you provide. I call it, txt underscore title. This ID becomes extremely important, especially when you want to ask a question. And the message is going to display. At the moment, it's new text block. I can say, please submit your complaint. When you add this, although I said it's not guaranteed that it's going to look the way that you see it here in different hosts, still you have a little bit of room to customize so for example for the font type you can say default or you can pick monospace at the moment i pick for example monospace so it is something like this it looks a little bit better let me increase the way to bolder and you can increase the size not by the font number by medium a little bit higher large yeah, that's fine. It's scary enough to present the idea of complaint. Now, color becomes more entertaining. As you can see, for the color, you don't have red, green, yellow, or whatever. You can have dark, light, accent, good warning, attention. So let me pick warning, for example, and it looks like this. Now, if the host has the red color for the warning, it becomes red. If your host has, for example, green for warning, it turns green. You got the idea. So we created one element on the top of it. Now, we need to add a picture. This guy has the option to add image. So let me just drag and drop an image right after this and see how it looks. It's an empty image without anything. Just like before, because it's an object that you added, add an ID. I can say img underscore angry operator. The most important thing, you cannot add the image directly here. Remember, it's pure JSON, so it accepts the image URL. I typically add the images on OneDrive, which I've already done that. Just make sure you create a link that is available to everybody, get a copy of it, and inside image URL, I just stick the URL here, and you see, boom, all of a sudden, we have this beautiful lady here waiting to receive your complaint. You can set spacing, you can set alignment, you can add alternate text. Let's go with the spacing, make it default or make it large. You see it gives a little bit more spacing on the top. At the moment, I just want to set it to none. I need my valuable space on this form. The size is not set, but I can make it small or I can make it medium or I can make it large. Height is good, horizontal alignment, I want to make it center, just like the way it was in my wireframe. At the moment, I have one title and one image. Now let's see how it looks like inside Copilot Studio. To do that, you see we have here a card payload editor. So if I expand it, you will see all the JSON that has been created for this adaptive card. So let me take a copy of it, you can say, copy card payload, or you can just select everything and get a copy of it. I click on copy a card payload and I bring it back to my question. Now, while this adaptive card is selected, I go to edit JSON, remove everything, and I just 
paste my new JSON here, and as soon as you tab away, boom, you have an adaptive card. Yes, it's complaining, it's missing an action submit button, but that's all right, we will get there. So I go back to my adaptive card designer, and now I also minimize this guy because I need the space, and I want to add another text block. I just add it right under this, and I call it, it's a label for me for first name, and the text is gonna be first name. It's gonna display here, you're good, I don't want to be picky. Right after that, I need to add a text input, drag and drop right after that, and I select it. For this one, ID becomes extremely important, and I call it txt client name. Tab away, and we are good. Placeholder, I can put a text here, please enter your first name, or you can even leave it blank. All right, so now it looks a little bit better. Before I add the other fields, I guess last name is exactly the same as first name, so I don't want to waste your time on that. Email address becomes slightly different, so I can add another text block right after that, and I want to call it LBL email. It's a label for email, and the text is going to be email, and right after that, I want to add another text input, and this text input is going to be txt underscore client email, and for the placeholder, I can simply say, please enter your email address. Now, one thing that you can do here, if I scroll down, you have a property called pattern, you have a property called error message, and you have a property called required. First of all, I can mark it as required. Required inputs should have a label. It's important. This label is going to refer to this control in the error message. So we don't want to use the ID which we are using internally, so we put a label as email, which is good enough. And then for the validation, if you say it is required, you need to specify the error message. I say email is required, or in better words, a valid email is required. Okay, better. Pattern is a regular expression. If you are familiar with regular expression, that's fantastic. If not, I don't want to dig into regular expression pattern. I just go to Google and I search for email regular expression. Whatever that comes up, I just pick it up. This is good. I just pick it up from here, copy, and stick it here. This one validates the email format. So it just makes sure that the user cannot just enter a random text which does not have a proper email format. Great. And the last thing that I want to add here, I just need to add a submit button. And that submit button, you look here, you don't see any submit button. But there is something called action set. So you pick the action set and add it right after that. An action set can have different forms or shapes. So first of all, I want to give it an ID and I call it btn underscore submit action. And now under this, I can add an action. So I can click on add an action and I want to add an action submit, which is going to be a button. Now, if I pick this button, I can say btn underscore submit as an ID, just like everything else that we design, a style or whatever that you want. These are just uh, cosmetic. It doesn't matter. And I just need to provide a proper title for it, which is submit. We can preview. Great. We can copy the card payload and bring it back to our copilot. This time again, I pick this guy up. I just delete everything and I paste my new content here. As soon as I tab away, you will see everything here. And all of a sudden, you see that I have two emails. First email is the text label that we put there. The second is just a label for the text box. So in reality, you don't need to pick something like this. You can simply get this text and use it for this text input label.
here. All right, so this is just for your information. You can add labels wherever you want, but for the input items, you really don't need to put an extra text block for the label. So I can simply get rid of it. I get rid of it. And now this is my nice and clean form. So again, I copy the card payload, bring it back to my Copilot Studio, get rid of everything here, and I just paste it back again, tab away, and we're good. Oh, fantastic. Let me just save it and test it. And when I test it, let's do it again. Adoptive card question demo. Now you can see the entire form here and you can say first name, for example, Ali Reza and email. I can put something at something.com. So this one is apparently a proper email format and I can click on submit. But where did that information go? Which is our next thing, because we want to use this information inside our copilot or inside our topic. As you can see, every value that I received as input goes into a variable. So first of all, my action submitted goes into a variable, which I don't care. That makes sense if you have multiple action buttons, so you can decide which action button is actually pressed. Client email is in one variable, client name is in another variable. So right after that, if I say send a message, I can simply say hi, and I can enter the first name from the variables, which is gonna be client name. We will contact you on your email address. And I can simply click on this guy and I use the client email right after that. Tab away, go back here. Sometimes it forgets the value that you add here, save it. And again, we go back here and take a look, making sure everything is in place. Yes, it is. So let's refresh it and try again. Adoptive card question demo. It shows my adoptive card. First name is Ali Reza. Email address is something at something.ca and I click on submit. Hi Ali Reza, we will contact you on your email address, blah, blah, blah. Great. And this is fantastic. I leave the rest to you. Now, before I close this video, pause the video on this screen, get the screen capture of this adoptive card wireframe, pass it to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to create an adoptive card for Copilot Studio using this wireframe it gets 90% of this right. And now you're asking, Ali, if it is that easy, why did you bring us to this stupid adoptive card designer? Well, give it a try and you will see. Unless you know the elements inside it and you know how to edit them here, what you get from ChatGPT is not gonna do the trick. Let me know in the comment section. Now, keep that in mind. If you're using ChatGPT to create your adoptive card, the JSON code that ChatGPT produces you can always copy it and paste it inside Adopter Card Designer and do the final touches and all your own additional customization on that. So always my suggestion is that you go for ChatGPT right in the beginning, create your base and bring it to Adoptive Card Designer and do the final edits. Yes, ChatGPT does a good chunk of the work, but it doesn't help if you don't understand what is going on inside that adaptive card. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this course. A like and subscribe will be really appreciated. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon in the next video.